Hello and welcome back to another episode to LinkedIn to Kitsifos. In today's video, I'm going to show you and explain a little bit about the internal forces of the quad elements. And also I'm going to show you an elegant way how to scale them. Because in my next video, I would like to undertake a design of a quad element. The original problem was arisen when I wanted to define external forces and moments on quad elements explicitly with the help of command S. However, I had to realize that this command is very old and doesn't really work anymore. So I thought a reasonable way would be to create unit internal forces in the quad element and then scale them. In this way, I can reach the desired values in the quad elements for the design procedure. Okay, first let's get familiarized with these internal forces one by one, such as the mx expanding moment myy, mxy, vx, vy, nxx, nyy, and nxy. I have created a simple figure to demonstrate these forces. However, I realized if I draw them, all of them into one figure, maybe there will be too much information in one figure. So I subdivided it in a way to be able to present first the membrane forces, then the bending moments, and finally the shear forces. In this one, we can see the membrane forces. Please notice that I'm always presenting the global coordinate system and the local coordinate system of the element. So basically the NXX membrane force is a force that happens in the plane of the quad element and make it expand in the local x direction. Similarly, the NYY force is a force that is acting in the plane of the quad element and make the quad element expanding in the local y direction. There is an internal force called NXY, which also acts in the plane of the quad elements. And as you can imagine, from the direction of the small arrows, it makes a deformation in the local x and also in the local y direction of the quad element. Okay, so these were the so-called membrane forces. Now let's have a look at the bending moments of the quad element. They look something like this. Let's start maybe with the mxx bending moment. It could be a tricky for the very beginning because the MXX bending moment is not a bending moment whose vector is pointing in the local X direction, but it is a bending moment that makes stresses in the local X direction. Or in other words, the MXX bending moment makes stresses against which you need to provide reinforcement in the quad element in the local x direction. In a similar manner, we can say that the myy bending moment is a bending moment that generates stresses in the local y direction of the quad element. Apart from these bending moments, we also have the mxy bending moment in the quad element. The mxy bending moment is a torsional or twisting bending moment, as you can see in this figure. And the mxy bending moment makes a twist about the local x-axis, whereas the myx bending moment makes a twist about the local y-axis. The unit of these bending moments are all kilonewton meter per meter. Now let's have a look at the shear forces in the quad element. In the quad elements, we can have or we can obtain the vx shear force and the v y shear force as you can see in this figure. The vx shear force is a shear force that is changing along the local x-axis of the quad element, whereas the vy shear force is a force or shear force that is changing along the local y-axis of the quad element. The unit of the vx and vy shear forces is kilonewton per meter. And if we now put all the internal forces together into one figure, then we are getting back our original figure, which can also be seen in the ASE manual, by the way. Okay, now let's head over to the model that I have created to create 
these unit internal forces in the quad element. I have created the model with the SSD Sophie Plus workflow, but also uh, with the help of Teddy, just to demonstrate that in this particular example, the Teddy workflow is much, much easier and faster than working with the SSD and Sophie Plus. In the screen, now you can see the model that I have created. First, I have generated the structural points number one, two, three, and four. The length of the side is one meter of this square, because in this way, it's going to be very easy to apply the loads on the quad element and be able to produce the unit internal forces of the quad element. After having created the structural points, I defined one structure area. If I double click on it, the properties of the structural area will be visible. And we can see that it is made out of some kind of a concrete material with some reinforcement. The thickness of it is 400 millimeter. What is more important in this case that at the meshing, I set the control of meshing to generate single element only. As a consequence of this setting, after the meshing procedure, I'm going to get only one single quad element in the database. It is also worth mentioning that the stiffness or the geometry of this uh, structure area was set to slab, membrane and rotational. This means that it is an absolute general quad element, which has all the stiffness that are available. Now let's have a look at the definition of the support. As you can see, instead of the fixed point supports, I used springs. And I will tell you what is the reason behind when we click on one spring element. You can see that at the definition of the stiffness of this spring element in the axial and also in the transverse direction, I chose a very small number, a very small modulus to the spring because if I had set this value to a high value and apply a unit load on the quad element, I wouldn't be able to obtain the exactly same value as internal force in the quad element. So I had to be cautious not to define a high value for the spring stiffness, but on the other hand also to provide enough stiffness to the structure against stability. So finally, I found those values reasonable for this type of structure. Okay, now let's move on to the applied loads. If you look at the load cases of the action and load case manager dialog box, you will see what type of load cases I have created. First, three load cases for the bending moments MXX, MYY, MXY with the number 911 till 913. Then three other load cases for the NXX, NYY, NXY from 921 till 923. And finally, two load cases for the VX, VY shear forces with numbers 931 and 32. Now let's look into these load cases one by one. At the moment I'm presenting load case 911. And so this load case was set up to get the unit MXX bending moment in the quad element. As I mentioned before, now we need to set up a bending moment that makes stresses in the local X direction. That is why you can see that the applied load is MYY bending moment with a value of 0 0.50 kilonewton meter. And from the vector of the bending moment, you can see that really this bending moment is going to cause stresses in the local X direction. Since I have one meter by one meter square quad element, the applied load must be 0 0.50 kilonewton meter at the corner points. When I switch to load case 912, you can see a very similar load case, which was created to generate the MYY unit load in the quad element. In this load case, one must use MXX bending moment with a value of 0 0.50 kilonewton meter at the corner points in order to get the MYY bending moment in the quad element that is causing stress in the local Y direction. 
if we now look at load case 913, we will see that both MXX and MYY bending moments were applied at the corner points. Why is that? It is because in this load case, I wanted to create a unit load in the quad element that causes one kilonewton meter per meter MXY bending moment. At the definition of the point loads, there is no such a way to apply an MXY bending moment. So you need to apply both MXX and MYY bending moments at the corner points. If you look at the orientation of the MXX MYY bending moments, you can see that this load is really going to be causing a twisting bending moment about the local x axis of the quad element. Since it is a twisting bending moment about the local x axis, some of the corner points would like to lift up, whereas other corner points would like to sink. And this is the reason why it was very important to use spring elements and not so stiff spring elements instead of fixed bearings. If I had used fixed bearings, the uplift or the sinking of the nodes could not be happened. Okay, now let's review the next load case, namely 921, in order to create the MXX unit membrane force in the quad. In a very similar fashion, I have applied PYY forces acting in the local Y direction in load case 922 to obtain the NYY membrane force of the quad. The load case 923 was created to obtain the NXY membrane force of the quad element. As you can see here, in this load case, I used both PXX and PYY forces at the nodes of the quad. As a result of this loading, uh, the quad element will expand in this direction and contract uh, the direction perpendicular to it. Finally, in load case 931 and 32, I have defined loads to obtain the VX and VY shear forces in the quad element respectively. The only thing I had to pay attention to is the following. When I applied the PZZ 0.25 kilonewton at this node and the other PZZ force being equal with 0.25 kilonewton at the other corner of the quad element and went vertical loads on the other structural points in the other direction with the same magnitude, then the equilibrium of this quad element cannot be hold anymore. So what I had to do is to apply bending moments at the corner points of the quad element to counteract this action. And as you can see, I have applied MYY bending moment at the corner points of the quad element to do that. In the last load case 932, I did exactly the same, but in this case we want to get the unit force VY in the quad element so the applied load and the applied bending moment is a little bit different. I think I have explained everything about the model, so let's just quickly export it to the database and then run these load cases with module ASE. So if we look at the model in SSD, what we will find is that the structure area has been meshed into one quad element only. This is very important in this case. Then I have inserted a linear analysis task and by opening it, I can control which load case to be calculated. And by clicking on the OK button, all the load cases will be calculated that are necessary for the unit force definition. After having run the analysis successfully in SSD, I opened the wind graph or graphics. And now I'm presenting the MXX bending moment in the local X direction from load case 911. As you can see, the unit is kilonewton meter per meter and the value is really 1.0. If I now want to present, for example, the bending moment MYY in the local Y direction, 
I need to change the load case to be presented. And as you can see, really, I have 1.0 unit bending moment in the quad element. Let's review load case 913. In this case, I need to present the twisting moment MXY. And instead of looking at the nodal values, I can go ahead and select the element value. And really, it is 1.0 kN meter per meter MXY bending moment in the quad element. Of course, in the very similar way, one can verify all the load cases to be sure that the 1.0 unit internal force has been generated in the quad element. And the reason why we did the whole procedure until now is to be able to scale these loads. Let me show you how. If we go back to SSD, you can see I have created a text input combination of loads. And in this task, I have created a SOFI load module and set up two new load cases, load case one and load case two. And now you may understand how easy it is to scale up these unit loads. Simply, you just need to copy in one certain load case and with a factor, you can scale up the unit load to the desired value. So one can create a load case for the ULS design checks and scale up the unit loads according to the requirements. Then another one maybe for the SLS checks. So all you need to do is to run this task and then analyze these load cases with the help of module ASE. That's why I have inserted another linear analysis where I only selected load case one and two to be calculated. When the analysis of load case one and two is finished, we can go back to wind graph or graphic to check the internal forces of the element. So now I will, for example, select the bending moment MXX in the local X direction, will choose the design forces ULS case, and really the MXX bending moment is 300 kN per meter as I have copied in to load case one. Or we can also double check the internal forces of the quad element if we use result viewer and choose load case number one. And really what we are going to find is that the internal forces, forces of the quad element are fully matching with our input. After having copied in the individual unit load cases into the design load cases, and let them run linearly. The next step could be to proceed with the design of the quad elements with the help of module BMS, which I'm going to show to you in the next video.